Oh man, it's been a little bit. So I got a question asking about whatever happened or what did we ever figure out with that odd math issue that I posted a, a few weeks ago. So I'm here outside my car. I want to kind of talk about what we found out when I was working with Dom on this one and uh, ultimately how did we fix it. One of the key things that we ran into was a setting. Now the setting, it was also compounded by a couple of other things, more specifically, the map line. So right here, I have my main vacuum map line. Notice how it's coming in between intake runners, uh, basically three and four. What happened on this one is the vacuum line on his was ran to a different spot. More specifically, it was on a runner itself, number five. And so as you're going through, these map sensors are amazing. So even though it's a vacuum line that runs all the way from here, all the way back there, all the way over, over there, and then back into my car to the ECU, it's so crazy. I guess, sensitive, that it's able to see every single little thing that happens. In fact, there's even some that have figured out how to put a vacuum line on an individual runner and be able to tell where top dead center is by being able to read how the map line is interacting. That's how active or how, I guess, sensitive they really are. Now, as you're going through and you're kind of taking a look at this and what was going on, what we're seeing on the data logs, you're seeing those spikes up and down. Well, data logs are not exactly a perfect moment in time. When we think about it is that space and time on that data log as it's going through, it's a window, it's a snapshot. It, uh, it was just kind of showing that something was going on, but not necessarily how bad it really was. Now, if we had a data log that could go to that fine detail of what was happening every cycle, that would be crazy, but it would essentially be able to give us a detail and let us know what was going on in that case. So, there was a couple different settings that I talked about as well. So the physical location of the map line was not on the plenum itself through this area. Even mine, I kind of don't like how it's really close between three and four, but there's a better spot underneath, but the turbo took that one from me. So I might actually add one and use it at a different spot. Um, more on that later. So, or I might just pull off from one in a different area, like over here where the brake reservoir is. So thinking about that one, I, uh, I will run some tests and kind of figure out what works best for me. Uh, there used to be a couple people on the forums that talked about using like a welder tip inside of the vacuum line to go ahead and slow the airflow as it goes through. That's kind of the same principle, but there are some settings in the software to do this much easier and much more effectively. So let's go ahead and dive into the software and I'll show you what I'm talking about there. Okay, so I've got this pulled open. This is uh, the tune that I received. So I'm just gonna let it load up under a temporary project. And I'll kind of show you what I was talking about with that map line. So we had the original issue of the map line was actually plugged into what I would consider a bad spot on the, the actual intake manifold itself. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm gonna do now is call out some of the things that I noticed. So up first was the map sample settings. So if I came in here, you can see the sample method was not exactly what you would expect. It was use time minute, or in general, it just wasn't what you think. And then the number of sample events was one. So this is just reading just crazy. Really what we're looking for is event average. This is the normal, and even if you read the little shortcut help here, the event average is really what is meant for most engines, unless you're running kind of like a single cylinder setup, okay? The other thing, which was a little bit more interesting, I think it was found underneath uh, general settings. I gotta find it again. Yep, here it is. The map averaging lag factor, for some reason or another, this was set to 80. And so in general, the higher the number, the more responsive it is. Let's see, no smoothing, 10%, highly smooth is the saying there. When I went back and looked at some of my tunes, my tunes all came back out of 50. That's what I'm used to seeing. So in this case, he had that bumped up to 80, which means it was a little more uh, I guess hyperactive than normal. So first thing uh, Dom did is he went in there and he changed it from the time minute to, to the average. And then he went in here and played with the averaging lag factor. And uh, his response to me was that really solved 
most or the majority of the issues that he was feeling with the car with that uh, data log issue where it was showing it bounce around all over the place and kind of acting funny. So I just wanted to take a moment, share that with everyone. So in case anyone watches that video um, from a couple of weeks ago, they know what was done to ultimately solve it. I don't want to sit there and just throw out something, have someone watch it and be like, huh, I wonder how they ever figured this out. Like half the 90% of forms that you read when you're trying to find something that's similar to what you're experiencing. Yay. Anyway, if any of you guys have something you want me to take a look at or uh, want me to take a peek at something and troubleshoot it the best I can, let me know. I'm always more than happy to help. Otherwise, stay tuned.